Hello, I will here give you an update on my Lamborghini project. As you may know or may not know, this is my long time project for, that is going on for several years to do evolution of this Lamborghini that I, twin turbo Lamborghini that I, I am building. This year 2007 has not been a good year for this car. It has been not driving. Engine has been out. So uh, usually my plan is to drive a little bit every summer with the car, but um, yeah, not this year. And the main thing is that I'm building the engine. The turbo system I built uh, before, so I had the turbo in this car, but with stock engine. So uh, my next move, because I, I was, uh, the boost was very low, and my next step now is to build the engine to um, be able to do take out more power out of the engine. So the plan is to build the engine stronger. And the main thing is that the engine here has been in the main machine shop for a very long time, more than half a year. But uh, there has been some circumstances. Owner of this machine shop have been uh, sick. You cannot blame him for that, but it, it, it has been taking a long time. Yeah, I can say th this block is aluminum. Uh, it's all a seal material. I now have uh, steel liners inside these sleeves. I think actually the engine and the pistons could hold pretty good power, but the weak link in these cars are the connecting rods. So first plan was to maybe just replace the connecting rods and uh, make the car stronger, but my ultimate goal for this car is to have a lot of power. I don't have any number goal, but it um, the goal is to have more than in my Supra. In my Supra I had 1294 uh, at the wheels. So more than that, and actually the plan is even more, but it's gonna take some time, uh, several years of building. I think uh, when I have the engine holding up for the power, I think the next problem is going to be this little guy here, the gearbox that I need to rebuild for stronger. And uh, yeah, it's a bigger project because you can not, not just buy a stronger gearbox, you have to make something so, some parts of this engine will be stronger than they have to be for this power I'm going to uh, utilize from the car this, uh, this coming summer, 2018. But one thing we have machined here is it now have uh, steel uh, cylinder liners in this block. So it will be stronger. I was looking at different al alternatives on uh, liners. Darton, the American brand, was up there, but then I chose a uh, European brand of liners, and they actually do the liners for Koenigsegg, for the aluminum blocks, so I think they are pretty good. Uh, I'm trying to source fine parts for it. So it's um, very good liners in there, and there are some other special things made to the block as well here. The next step here now is to uh, do the ring gaps, to file in the ring gaps of this engine. So that's the next step. Everything here you see is pistons and rods. They are uh, balanced and uh, within one tenth of a gram uh, in weight. And also did some balancing of everything. The Crankshaft is balanced, very nice. It's it's the stock crankshaft it will do for now, and it has some heavy metal inserted here. So in in the in the weights here it has some heavy metal inserted because these pistons and uh, connecting rods are heavier than the original ones. That's actually a bad thing. The rotating parts are heavier than stock. To, to hold the power need to do that. Here is the stock connecting rod and you can see it's not that uh, it's pretty weak. The small end here is tapered. 
I don't know if it's say it's broken. This this it's not machine. This uh, halves here, it's broken. I think this is the weakest spot in in these uh, Gallardo five liter uh, engines, 2004, 2008 car that the connecting rods. The rods now it's a H beam rod. This is actually a spare rod. I got um, more than 10 rods. And they are made by Autoverdi. It's a Swedish company, so they are made in Sweden. It's cool to have a Swedish parts in, in the car. And uh, cool that companies in Sweden, it, they have been for many years. They make connecting rods for many kind of race engines. They do. Uh, dry some pumps for NASCAR engines and uh, I think pro stock and stuff like that so thickness of it much much stronger definitely hold up the power and it it is actually possible to buy Carrillo rods for this engine and here is uh, off the shelf yeah a little modified uh, Carrillo rod for the Gallardo engine uh, but I chosen the Swedish brand and it, this is not off the shelf. It has uh, different some different uh, di dimensions than um, the The Caril rod or compared to the stock rod. It has some uh, differences I will try out to, to see uh, Everything from my own specification of the of the rod. They're pretty similar this uh, Caril rod and the how to wear the rod, a little bit different, but um, yeah, they're both strong and will do the job, I'm pretty sure about. The pistons here are CP piston, the, here's the stock piston, I think uh, I think it's a Mahler piston, uh, and I think it will hold up pretty good, but um, and very lightweight, it's a very nice piston to be from a, a stock engine. But uh, now I'm aiming for more power. So I had this um, custom made pistons, would be nice with Mahler racing, but usually I always before used um, CP pistons in my Supras, so went with that this time as well. And it's very good, they're very friendly, and it's possible to uh, get whatever dimensions of everything uh, you want. So it has similarities to uh, original pistons, but it is much stronger to be able to hold that power. So there is some tricks made to this one and no coating, usually I don't use that. I have been using these uh, before in my Supra, similar to this one, made uh, over 200 horsepower per um, piston. So yeah, this will hold for a lot of power. And as you can see here also, the original piston is, um, it has a dome there and this piston is, has a little dish so the compression ratio I have uh, been lowering it a little bit to uh, be able to run pretty ho high horsepower even with the uh, pump fuel because now this car is flex fuel car so I can uh, I can do um, both uh, ethanol E85 and uh, gasoline I will not uh, say everything I've done to them because maybe it's not working, maybe it is working good. So we'll see, we'll see. And also here is some head studs. I had some head studs. ARP is uh, I used before. Did not make head studs for this engine. So from another company, there is these head studs. I was able to get. It, they did not have a kit for this engine, but. Uh, they could make uh, headstones for me. So, but I think the ears are similar to ARP's normal one. So the, they will do the job now in the beginning. Maybe I have to do some uh, stronger in the future here. I will do all the assembly, check all the gaps, everything, do the yeah um, ring gaps, everything like that. So like normal, I, I will build my cars and everything as much as I can myself okay one more thing about the car you can see here it's a front bumper it's not matching the color because i'm putting in a new front bumper here 
It's a RSC front bumper LP560 type, but it's uh, made for, for uh, this pre-LP Gallardo. It's not painted yet because I'm fitting it out. Here it's a carbon fiber splitter here. It's a nice piece and this is not fiberglass, it's... Uh, uh, sorry, I don't remember the material now, but um, it's a more stock-like uh, material. So it's some more fitting of this one and then it will be painted and there are some grills. It will have a nicer look. Maybe bigger air intakes, I think. So maybe better, little better, better cooling. Um, hopefully, that's never a bad thing with the more cooling. Here is also one uh, outlet that is not on the old uh, front bumper. And actually, one thing why I changed this, I wanted to change it, but uh, then it was a little accident. I was uh, passing on my way to work, you can see here, the stock front bumper, it cracked. On my way to work, I was passing a um, semi-trailer, it was dark and rainy, and when I just passed it, it was walking ducks all over the road. It, they were walking in a line, it was nothing to do, I braked, but uh, Here's a duck killed my front bumper, and I think the duck died as well. Rest in peace, duck. What more to say uh, I have done with the car? I've not done very much with the car when I was waiting on the engine a little bit here and there, but I've been busy with uh, my work and uh, working with my company, uh, BJP Race, and so on. So, but I can show you some things about the car. Here we have the water radiators for the intercooler it's two of them one here and one on that side right hand side also you can see here the wire harness is here now because i'm testing some sensors one thing i have done i have done some service of the car putting in new fuel filters you can see here that is is new fuel filters that actually fits in the original um, Clampster. It's the same diameter, but I have changed it to the the stock fuel lines. It will be the stock fuel lines for now. They will hold. I will change the fuel pumps. One filter there, one filter there, and also here. Here you can see the fuel composition sensor. Ethanol sensor sits over there, so it will now have full flex fuel. This car. Here's some e-gear oil systems there so hopefully i will uh, put some work in this engine i will have to um, have now checked some clearance i will order some uh, bearings and uh, then i can put the engine together and uh, yeah if we should check a little bit inside here the car i love this doors very nice carbon fiber and no, actually the interior i love this interior alcantara everywhere okay one thing here that i can show that i put a lot of work in is the electronics and wiring i'm not actually very very proud of how it is looking uh, but beware it's a prototype 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 the wiring here so uh, I started out putting in this and, uh, when I was in Dubai. So this uh, car has been running with the aftermarket ECU for uh, yeah, quite a couple of years. Uh, I was running the car without turbos and the Motec in Dubai and also the first time in Sweden here. So this is just prototype. It's a lot of wires here. You can see it's uh, and it's not very nice looking everything here. It's prototyping, but the car is running, everything is good, so that's, that's it. Yeah, of course, when the engine is there. And to show you, this is uh, engine uh, ECU. Over there, we have another ECU. They're controlling half the engine each. Here is the um, transmission control unit. 
so that's controlling the e-gear transmission because it's uh, it's no shifter here you can just put in what mode you want to drive and the e-gear here originally at this spot it was uh, relays and circuit breakers for everything related to the engine I removed all of that and instead of that I have this uh, Motec PDM power distribution module so that's uh, uh, solid state relays and the circuit breakers in this that I can program so it's one plus inside and then uh, several outputs so every output everything uh, is in there programmed so that's uh, that's a really nice piece uh, and these are made of magnesium so they are very nice boxes and very small compared to what they can do and also under here you can see the heart of the engine it's the Motec M150 uh, ECU that is controlling the engine and it is controlling everything. It's controlling the injectors, ignition, camshafts, throttle bodies, intake uh, runners. Yeah, uh, yeah, everything and it has a lot of sensors to it. It is uh, no piggyback, no like underground uh, Gallardo stuff with uh, extra injectors put in. These are controlling the normal injectors that of course is bigger now so it's not the piggybacking and uh, yeah controlling the normal uh, throttle bodies no throttle bodies hide away on the side here underground style that this uh, normally ECUs is controlling and then the uh, other box is controlling but I still have these stock ECUs in here I want to get rid of these someday but the reason they are there now because they get some signals and they are talking to the transmission control unit here so the, it, get, it gets it information hopefully later on uh, when i can have time and I, I can work it out it can get this information can bus information from the motec and hopefully in the future but i think it's a lot of work i can do, put uh, the control of the transmission into the motec box or another motec box but uh, right now it's not possible so yeah it's a lot of boxes here now uh, but the Motec is controlling everything and I also have one dash here it's a Motec dash that is um, originally it is three gauges up here now it's uh, I replaced it with a with a color dash here Let's see if it powers up yeah Okay, and radio came on as well here. Of course, it has radio and air condition. Some cats there, of course. And uh, yeah, I'm doing some custom uh, uh, dash there with the, wh whatever information I want to have. But still in the works. Also, also some here connections here. It's Ethernet for the um, ECU and. Uh, uh, UTC to CAN for for the PDM here so but it's easily connectable here um, to put the computer on there when you're out tuning also here is the cradle it's aluminum and uh, yeah steel I think uh, made of here and one thing uh, is the clutch of the car it is um, I have some different alternatives. Here is a writer engineering clutch with the lightweight flywheel. It's from the GT2 engine, and uh, but I think that uh, this is the clutch that came in the car that I have modified. It's looking stock. It's a two-disc uh, clutch in these cars, and I have uh, machined this one. To um, I had to um, a, fr a friend helped me fabricate the tool so I can measure the spring force then I modified it for a higher spring force and I will have uh, putting different friction materials in it and I have to um, uh, do some testing about it it's now newly balanced here you can see um, so there's a lot of experiments going on with the with the with the clutch here uh, to get the clutch holding the power and uh, making um, uh, 
the good drivability of this car with the e gear it's a robotic transmission it's a normal transmission with the syn synchronizers but everything is controlled electronically and uh, hydraulically so it's hard with um, I see some cars in US with high horsepower in this e gear gearboxes there the cars is not possible to drive normal they're jumping like a rabbit and I don't want that so yeah we'll we'll see what what, what to do um, uh, with the clutch. Uh, now for this power, I think the upgraded normal clutch will uh, work, but in the future we'll see what I can do. And uh, I have also been thinking of maybe put, uh, because this only have two pedals, to put a third uh, clutch pedal, but it would also be, be cool to have a Formula One style lever, clutch lever here, so you can control the clutch manually as well to get off the line but the best thing would be if because i can see the big companies in in uh, had in several years problems with um, uh, this e-gear cars to get the cars possible to drive normally so we'll see i i, I must it, it's it's a street car that it's going to be fast this one so of course it has to be working uh, good all the normal driving situations that's that's priority number one not not speed it should be possible to drive it very good and there is not a lot of information what to do with these engines when you take more power out of them so all the modifications i do i don't right now go in too much into detail about it uh, because i don't know if it's gonna work or not maybe this is a bomb that uh, going in pieces or maybe it's it will be hopefully it will be working good but that's uh, one of the funny things uh, with this car that it's not just to, to read on internet and um, build after what's what you read on internet by the way here is uh, my sensor harness uh, I show you the wiring inside the car is not the nicest the sensor harness I made here. It's pretty pretty nice uh, It's a Dodge Autosport connector and uh, yeah with the Raycam and oh, Let's see here sensor harness number one It's made by me for this car it's 100% uh, now it's dirty yeah, but 100% uh, 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 fluid resistant um, tepsil wire but uh, yeah the sensor wire here is is pretty nice everything coolant CLT Bosch connector and by the way here is the um cylinder head i'm not doing anything to the cylinder heads uh for now i think this is actually an engine with over 500 horsepower naturally aspirated so uh, the the head this maybe next step will be to port the head or do something with it but here is some tools i had a friend of mine christian very nice of him uh, machine this um, tool here to um, keep the cam shafts uh, positioned when you do uh, timing of the cam shafts because you remove the uh, gears here and the gears are yeah it's uh, very uh, variable uh, cam timing both on intake and exhaust so when you're timing the um, putting it's no pin here so when you bolt it in you have to have the cam shafts uh, at zero and then you have a dial gauge at uh, the piston through the igniter plug hole but uh, yeah I have some tools I have actually Lamborghini original tools and some yeah we have to fabricate to uh, put this engine together so that's one of the many more one of the steps to put this car out on the street again and one thing that I think is a little bit funny that this engine block is not uh, that big actually. It's very small. If you look at this engine room, it's very big. And this engine block, it's so small. If I 
put it here, it's nothing, it's nothing. But when you put it together, here is an empty block compared to the engine and maybe hard to see here but the complete engine with heads and intake they're huge. Uh, so plan was maybe to put, I have this uh, spare engine that is actually broken to put it in a small like formula car but damn it gets pretty, pretty big when it's assembled. So yeah we'll see. By the way anyone wants to buy a 2J ready to go in a Volvo kit just let me know. If I get a good offer I'm selling this engine and gearbox everything to fit in a Volvo. I will keep you informed when I keep progress of the car here.